So in this video, we're going to be creating this amazing interaction and you can find the code files in the GitHub, which will be linked in the description below. And if you find this video helpful and you'd like to maybe see more of these kinds of videos from me then hit the like and subscribe buttons as well. Let's get into it. Uh, this interaction is split into kind of two parts. First, we have the, the hover interaction with the black overlay that comes on. And then we have the model itself that displays the images. So to work on this, we'll start like by working on the, the um, black overlay first. So let's work on the layout structure and then we can go from there. So I just have my Tailwind set up here with, I'm importing the fonts, which is Montreal and setting it as the default fonts here and initializing some colors that we need in. So to get things off, we'll start with the basic structure of the layouts. So here I'm just creating the grid that we have for the labels on the, the projects. So we have a label for the project name, service duration, and year. I'm using the flex box and adding some styles. And now we have to import, not really import, but like use the projects um, component here in the app. So like displays. So right now here's what we have and we can now add some styles to center the project components on the page vertically and horizontally as well. So now we're going to create the structure of the project list item component so we can use it within the projects components and it's the same as what we have here. So we can just copy this, go to the project list item. Now we can get the project object as a prop from the um, app components and the structure it's, and this is the list of um, projects that we have. We can import that and use it in here and pass each item to its own project list item components. And then we can complete the styling for the project um, list item components and create the, the black um, overlay for the mask animation that we have. I also like to create user um, spans for each line each border we have in case we decide to um, animate them later. Now we can make sure that the last span here used for the bottom border only displays on the last list item. And then we can push the project list away from the labels to maintain consistency. So now, and I would like to work on the animation for revealing and hiding the black background here, the mask animation, and also the text animation for when you hover on the project list items. So let's do that now. So now I'm creating a ref so I can target the overlay span element. Then I need to create mouse enter and exit events so I can trigger the mask animation. If I can stop typing like a two year old, then I need to create this detect entry point function so I know which direction the mouse is coming in or going out from. So I can implement the right mask reveal and then I can get that and use that in here. And then we can install GSAP and start working on the mask review. All right. So before we continue, you need to understand a couple of things about clip paths. So if you already have an understanding of clip paths, then you can skip to the next section. So in CSS, um, clip paths help us to like mask out certain parts of elements. And we have the polygons, we have the ellipses and then the perfect circles. But for this video, we'll be focusing on just the, the polygons here. So basically they, they all work with, um, um, coordinates. So we, for the polygons, it starts at the top left, then the top right, bottom right, bottom left, and back at the top left. Now the, this, um, the middle coordinates here are just for like educational purposes on the polygon, um, path. You only need to pass the four corners, the, the top left, top right, and the, the rest, right? So. Uh, here, the top left, we have X at 0%. So we haven't moved an inch and Y also at 0%. Now on the top right, X becomes 100% because we moved all the way from here to here. And then Y is at zero. At the mid midpoint here, it's 50%. Again, that's for just on this illustration. Yeah, and that's how like you go round and then down here, Y is at 100% and X, it's 100% because we are the edge here. Over here, 
X becomes 0% because we are back at the starting point, sort of like the same axis and Y is at 100%. Then we round up back there. So that's basically what you need to understand for like the, the next crazy, craziness of the code you'll be seeing. All right. So let's jump back into this tutorial. All right. So all I'm doing here is using GSAP to animate the overlay span element depending on the direction of the mouse. So if the mouse is coming from the top, I like the clip path to fill the list item from the top and vice versa. So let's see if that's working. Uh oh, ran into a bug. First, I thought it was because I was setting the overlay to opacity zero. Then I thought I wasn't setting the initial state here. So I did that and still had the bug. And then I found out I wasn't passing the events to the function here and we still had the bug. And then I found out what it is I did. So dumb little me. Dumb little me, man. All right. So the problem with subtracting half of the element's height from the top here, instead of adding it, is that we are trying to determine whether the mouse is on the top part or the bottom part by checking if it's past the midpoint. Now, if we use the the um, subtract subtraction here, it will like offset it to like be outside the element itself. So in that case, the the if statements we have here will never get triggered. So that's why we need to like add it instead. So it like the midpoint is somewhere here. And if the mouse is coming from the top, yeah, then we trigger the top. If it's coming from the bottom, we return the bottom. So hopefully that makes sense. And that's working good. And now we have to go repeat the process for the exit animations. So it animates in from the top and out through the bottom. And that works. Now we do the else paths, which is just reversing everything. So we can come in from the bottom and out to the top. And that's working. That's working. I'm not surprised that's working. Yeah, that, that looks nice. That looks nice. Enjoy. Just enjoy. Enjoy it. That looks good. Okay. Not to knock now. Not to knock. And now I would like to animate the text when we hover on a list item, just like we have on the live demo. And I like to use plain CSS for this. So I like to change the text color to green, and then I can add a transform transition property to the first and last text and then move them respectively. And now we have um, this and that looks good. Yeah, that looks good. And now we can start working on the preview model. So this that displays the images. So let's do that. First, we need to set up the um, structure of the layouts. Here, I'm just creating the container for the preview model and receiving the project list as a prop coming in from the project component in the app.jsx file where we'll be using the preview model components. And that's all I'm doing here. So I'm just going to shut up and let the other me type. And now to know which item the mouse is on, we will pass the prop to update the active index. So we can use that for the modal state. But first we need to create the, the state, of course, and then update the function here. And yeah, pass that into the um, modal as well. Now we can create a ref to the div containing all the images. So we can then move that div up or down within the container, depending on the active index, of course. Also, I'd like to use a custom cubic Bezier ease for the movements. And GSAP allows us to define that using the custom ease plugin. All right, that works, but we need to like remove the translate property here so we can see the model more properly. Yep. All right. Now we need to move the image to the center to use a flex plugger. Now that works. So we can now work on getting the modal to mirror the mouse movement, so track the mouse. So let's do that. And to do that, we'll be using GSAP as well. So GSAP provides this method called Quick2 
which is made to handle operations like this, where we need to update a value based on the mouse movements. So we get the X and Y coordinates from the mouse and pass that into the move X and Y as parameters. But that works, uh, but we need to center the model on the cursor. So let's add the translate values we had before. Okay. So let's um, update the color. So each um, image on the model has different color backgrounds like we have in the live um, demo. Okay, that works. And now we can work on the exit and enter animations for when the user like leaves the project area. So I like to scale that down, scale the model down when we leave and then scale it back up when the user enters back into the space. So we're using a uh, custom ease for that as well. Yeah. And we need to set up the events to trigger when the user hovers. And that looks good. That looks nice. All right. If you found this video helpful and you'd maybe want to see more videos from me, hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, see you in the next one. Thank you.